Good morning, badasses, or good afternoon, I suppose, for most of you, Eastern, in fact, technically even here. Today, we're going to be talking about my absolutely favorite topic, which is pre-selection. Now, for those of you guys that tune in every single week, you know, hopefully by now, that I like to keep things interactive with you. You help me make sure that I'm teaching you the kind of content that you're actually learning and actually understanding. Now, we're teaching a very, very popular subject today. It's my favorite subject, and it's one that I know a lot of people already know some things about. So as I'm teaching this, I'm gonna need you guys to help direct me to make sure that not only I'm teaching you stuff that maybe you haven't heard before, but if I am talking about things that you have heard before, that you're helping me make sure you fully understand it. Let's, uh, let's just start very simple. First of all, um, I'm, I'm aided by both Brooke and Matt today. Matt, who's here pretty much every week, and Brooke, who's gonna be taking over during the Christmas period. Hello, Brooke. Ow. Hello, Matt. Hello. Awesome. So they're gonna be helping me the, back, uh, the backstages and they're gonna be answering all of your questions or more importantly, reading them out to me as we go. To start off with, do me a favor. Let's just prove that you guys are actually interactive and that you're real people and you're not just Google spiders, bots, just like watching everything. Please say hello to everybody in the chat room. Make sure you go in there you're, you're right now, get in your chat and just be like, hello Matt, hello Brooke. If you haven't done it yet, do it. If you're sitting at home and you're watching TV, if you've got this in like a secondary window and you're doing something else at the same time, please do me a favor and turn that off. Focus, this is a seminar, this is a lecture, and I'm here to teach you, and I wanna make sure that I do it right. If you just have this on the background, you're kinda of listening to it, and then like by the time it finishes, you're like, oh man, I really wish I'd asked that question, it's gonna be too late. Now is the time to speak, in advance, not afterwards, so focus, be present. Is everybody saying hi to you guys? Yes, they are, There's Yeah, lots. Lots, yeah. good, okay, have you got like over 100 people? Yeah. Awesome, so we've got over 100 people watching this live, which is brilliant, I'm glad you guys are here today, and I'm excited to be doing this with you. So, very simply, um, we're gonna be covering pre-selection, and I'm gonna ask you a question at the beginning, and you guys are gonna try and guess it. Later on, I'm gonna give the answer. So, in the chat window now, you're allowed to try and guess it, and this is the question. What can you buy for $1.29 that can increase your chances to get a girl by more than double? So, we're looking for something that costs $1.29 that you can buy um, that will increase your chance of getting a girl by over double. Um, it's not something you can buy from us here uh, at, at, at this particular place, uh, but it is something that can be bought. Um, you can find it pretty much anywhere. I don't care where you are in the world. Um, you could be anywhere from New York to Tijuana to Thailand, and you could probably find it and probably cost the same thing. So for $1.29, what do you think it is? Start putting your guesses in there, and we will keep going as we go. Now, how can you take advantage of something like that. What can you do um, with something that costs 129 that could possibly double your ability to get attraction? Well, it, it shouldn't have taken a genius to work out that whatever this thing is that you're buying, it's gonna give you pre-selection. And that's why this is so important because you can get pre-selection with something as silly as something as, as cheap as you can purchase for 129, which is insane. And we would call that particular technique something known as a stealth attraction technique. Now, if you've never heard of stealth attraction before, let me explain how it works. Stealth attraction is the idea that you are boosting your own attraction or you're analyzing um, somebody else's attraction to you or you're doing a, a subtle technique to turn somebody on in a way that they don't notice. Now, why is it important to be able to do that? Well, it's very simple. If you can generate attraction from somebody without them noticing what you're doing, then you never have to have the risk of them rejecting you or of having awkward situations. So, you know, you guys have probably had this situation before where you talk to a girl and then suddenly she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't see you that way. Or, oh, oh no, I just wanna be friends. Or, oh, no, I've got a boyfriend. You know, you get that reaction and, and you know, damn it, I know I've messed it up. I've made it clear that I'm hitting on this person and I really shouldn't have done that. I really shouldn't have made it that clear that I was that interested and so now I'm getting this uh, this repercussion from the other person um, and they're sort of like, um, you know, they're obviously not interested and I've blown it. With stealth attraction, that doesn't happen. With stealth attraction, you're doing something so small, so subtle, that if it works, it's great, but if it doesn't work, there is zero repercussions. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna be talking about building pre-selection in order to, to govern that stealth attraction. And if you're interested, then later on, I might give you a, a way that you can get a whole bunch more stealth attraction techniques. So I'm gonna take you through this one, the pre-selection one, and at the very end of the day, I'm gonna talk about a whole bunch more that you can get. There's actually one where um, you can use your hands as you walk through a crowd and you can trigger a ton of pre-selection. Um, I'm gonna give you that one as a, as a little bit of a teaser later on, explain how that's gonna work later as well, and where you can get a whole bunch more of these. Because I know 
people tend to love these techniques, you know, these cool little tricks and tips that you can use to, to really generate attraction. So if it's something that you're interested in, um, then at the end, I can tell you about that. Have we got guesses for yes. the 129? Yes. Okay, um, you know what it is, right? No. Okay, you don't know what it is. All right, so I, I'd like you to read out the ones that we definitely know it's not, first of all. Some of the funnier ones first, before okay. we get into the real ones. Uh, well, I don't know about funny, but I have gotten condoms, tweezers, a comb, a drink. Okay, wait, wait, let's read these out. Condoms, tweezers, a comb, a drink. Chocolate bar. Chocolate bar, none of these are correct so Gum, far. Men. Gum, mint, not correct. And finally, uh, oh wait, chapstick, cologne. Chapstick, cologne, all wrong. 129. Oh. Double, double your attraction. Over double, better than double. A rubber duck. A rubber duck, that's it. A rubber, no, it's not a rubber <laughs> duck. It's none of those, none of those. Come on, nobody guessed this yet? Brooke should have guessed it, to be honest. I thought it was gum. She thought it was gum. It's not gum. Uh, mouthwash. Not mouthwash. Wow, this is amazing. All right, cool. We're going to keep this going. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to keep it going. I'm not going to let you guys know. It's going to happen. I'm going to tell you, but not yet. We're going to keep it going. All right. So I, I want you to imagine. Let's, let's just let's get some communication going here. If I tell you what this thing is, if I said to you, this would work, would you today go out and buy it? Let, let's see how let's see if we can get commitment. Would you do that? Would you actively go out right now with a dollar twenty nine and spend it? Would it be worth it? Would it be worth spending a dollar twenty nine in order to generate double the amount of attraction you're getting right now? And it's just going to double whatever you're currently getting. Okay, so that's an important point to note. You still have to be having something. Double zero is still zero, which is why you still need to learn all these other techniques. But it can over double, over double the data you're getting right now. Um, so I'm curious if you guys actually because people are always like, oh yeah, yeah, I totally do it, and then they don't. And that's why they don't get attraction. It doesn't work for them. It's because they don't put into practice the things they should be doing in order to trigger the right um, techniques. You know, they'll learn it. They'll sit here and, like, I bet most of you knew what pre-selection was. I bet most of you've heard of it. But do you use it? Do you ever put it into practice? And that's why I wanted to tell you this one thing. It costs $1.29. You can just go out and get it, and you can just have it straight away. Do we have more guesses? We got more guesses. Huh? We got more guesses. More guesses. Uh, All right, let's see. A Q-tip. A Q-tip. Nope, not a Q-tip. A belt. It's not a belt. A necklace. It's not a necklace. A rubber band. It's not a rubber band. Dry cleaning. Get your clothes dry clean. cleaning costs more than one twenty nine. It's um, not a dry. It, it would be. No, it wouldn't. Fake glasses. Fake glasses. Yeah. Nope. It's not fake glasses. A jug of water. Jug of water. Nope. Uh, and then a stuffed animal. And it is not a stuffed animal. These are all amazing guesses. They are not correct. I will tell you this. Fake glasses was the closest. Um, I'll give you that. Fake glasses was the closest, if you guys can guess it. Okay, so, so the point is, once you learn this, once you put it into practice and you go out and do it, um, it, it can have a huge impact on your ability to, to generate attraction. Now, I'm actually going to tell you something right now. Um, I'm going to let you know what it is. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to break the suspense and let you know. And then I'm going to tell you that I don't recommend you do it because there's something better that you can do that costs nothing. So for $1.29, you can like over double your ability to generate attraction. I'm gonna tell you what that is, but there's something better you can do that costs nothing. I'm gonna see if, uh, if you can guess that in a second. So for $1.29, do we have a guess? Do we have it? Does anyone? Uh, well, my, so wait, razor, cloves, contacts, Handkerchief. Uh, razor. I love a razor. Yeah. For 139 you can by threatening people with a razor. No. Uh, an eye patch or a fake mustache. An eye patch or a fake mustache. No, it's neither of those. Matt, you get one guess. Go for it. $1.29. Everything costs more than $1.29. Everything costs more than $1.29. Alright, Matt. A guitar case, though. And I was like, you know what? That's, that's decent. A guitar case? It's way more than $1.29. Okay. Brooke, what do you think? $1.29. Uh, a balloon? A balloon. I you love balloons. It's not a balloon. Um, for $1.29, you can buy a fake wedding ring, a fake oh. metal wedding ring. And if you have a wedding ring on, then you already have built-in pre-selection. So what happens is, if you walk in a bar with a wedding ring on, you can talk to girls. They're going to feel very comfortable talking to you because girls see wedding rings very easily. Guys don't see it as much. So we don't often think about that. But if you have a fake wedding ring on, just like a fake band, you can buy a really cheap one for like a buck. Uh, you can buy it like any market, pretty much anywhere. There'll be somebody that's selling like a cheap metal band. Just put it on your ring, uh, on your ring finger. So it's this finger for those of you guys that are on the left hand. Um, and what will happen is girls will feel really comfortable talking to you. You can ask anybody. You've probably noticed it yourself. If you're in a relationship with a girl, uh, or, or you know, if you're married, you've noticed it's easier to meet.
meet women than when you're single. And it's all because of that wedding ring, because people see it and they go, oh, this guy's already taken, I feel comfortable talking to him. They talk to you, they get to know you, and then at some point, of course, you're gonna say, yeah, but then they're gonna say, aren't you married? And you go, no, I'm not married. Check this, this is the best line ever. I just wear this ring so women won't bug me in bars. Do you know how powerful that is? That's like saying, I'm so pre-selected that I have to wear a ring to stop myself being pre-selected because I'm so pre-selected. So that gives me more pre-selection. All it does is boost attraction. All it does. It's insane. It works incredibly well. But there is something you can do that, that doesn't cost anything that is even more effective than the ring. So, um, fuck it, that was fun. Let's do it again. Bonus points, if you can guess, what could you do for nothing, for nothing, that does exactly the same effect, exactly the same effect, and will drastically boost your ability to generate attraction. Just so why does pre-selection work? Why is it so powerful? Uh, pre-selection works for one very simple reason. Well, three very simple reasons. Trust, desire, and value. Okay, why does pre-selection build trust? It builds trust because they believe in the sanctimony of relationships and monogamy. Basically meaning, if you already have somebody, then they trust that you're not gonna do anything with them, meaning they can feel comfortable, you're not gonna try and have sex with them, that you're gonna look after them, and that you're gonna be a, a rightful and duteous man who's gonna do the right thing. That's what they genuinely believe. So you get trust. If you're in a relationship, they trust that you're gonna be committed to that relationship and they don't have to worry about you trying to hit on them. So because of that trust, it lets them get to know you better. When you first meet somebody, you're a complete stranger, and so you know they don't know anything about you except the fact that maybe you're trying to have sex with them. So they're like, oh, do I wanna have sex with this guy? I don't really know anything about him. Oh no, I really shouldn't. You see, it doesn't really work. Whereas once they get to know you and like, oh, he's a great guy and he's got a dog and you know he's really caring and he's so kind, and then they find out, oh wait, he's actually single? Oh, that's great. This is exactly the kind of guy I wanna get with. Boom, attraction can develop. But pre-selection doesn't just build trust, it also builds desire and value. At this point, let's pause, let's see. Uh, do we have any guesses for we what? definitely have it. Okay. okay. So my favorites though are steal a, a fake ring. Steal a fake ring for zero, yeah. amazing, yeah. Um, uh, get a boner. Get a boner. Wear a banana hammock. Get a banana, a, get a banana and wear a banana hammock. <laughs> get a boner and wear a banana um, hammock, okay. Be the gay friend. Be the gay friend, okay, and interesting. Then, Bring a female friend with you to a bar. So, all of those answers are terrible except bring a female friend to a bar. Yes, bringing a female friend to a bar would generate pre-selection, would cost nothing, and does actually work. But now, you don't have a female friend. Just gonna throw it out there. You don't have anybody you know before you get to the bar. So you're standing in line at the bar, completely on your own, you know nobody. Where's that pre-selection coming from? Cost you nothing. You're going to the bar anyway, right? So look, it doesn't take a lot of effort to go out, buy a ring, and pretend you're married. That's a very easy thing to do. However, well, not pretend you're married, but let them think you're married and then tell them you're not. However, next time you go to a bar, you are going to a bar, and you might be alone. So how can you get pre-selection standing in the line of a bar um, when you have literally, you don't know anybody, you don't have a fake wedding ring, what, what can you do? All right, so let's get back on to pre-selection. So trust, yep, trust's good. Desire. Why does pre-selection generate desire? It's very simple. Um, before you know about something, you don't want it, all right? So what I mean by that is, if you think back to like, um, like when you were younger and like you first learned about cars, you're like, oh my gosh, I really want a Ferrari. But it's possible because you don't know that Lamborghinis exist or you've never heard of a Bugatti before. And then when you learn about these other cars, suddenly you're like, oh my gosh, this is what I want. Like as a kid, I didn't know what Maserati was, but as I got older, I realized the Maserati is the car that I really wanted. So as we get older, we start realizing the things that we actually want versus um, the things that we know are available. Desire works exactly the same way. If she knows that you exist, then she's capable of realizing that that might be what she wants. But then the next question is, well, how does she know that you're worth having? Like, why do we want a Maserati versus, you know, not wanting a Skoda, for example, or a Lada? If you guys don't know what kind of cars these are, trust me, you don't want them. Um, and the reason this comes about is because we often want what other people have. Uh, a very good phrase to sum this up is, the grass is always greener on the other side. What somebody has on the other side of the fence 
is what we want. We don't want something somebody else doesn't want. Uh, this is a great advert that I used to watch in the UK that I loved, um, which was this woman who was going to buy the latest uh, washing machine. And so she'd go into this store and she'd be like, hi, can I have this washing machine? And they'd say, oh, I'm terribly sorry, madam, we've already sold it to Mrs. Jones. And then every time this woman went to buy a washing machine, um, it, was, it had always been sold to Mrs. Jones. And the whole point was these washing machines sell out very, very fast and Mrs. Jones always buys it. The point being, try and keep up with the Joneses, you've got to buy it first. And so there's a series of adverts that lasted like three or four years where it's like this woman goes in and she goes, hi, can I have this washing machine? Sorry, Mrs. Jones already bought that. And so it's this whole thing that if you don't get these washing machines quickly, you're gonna miss out, you're never gonna get it. And then after about four years, one day she walks in and she sees this washing machine and it's a different brand, it's not the one they're selling. And she goes, oh, um, do you have that washing machine? Is it available? And they go, yes, madam, this washing machine is available. And she goes, oh, I don't want it then. He goes, what do you mean you don't want it? He goes, if it's not good enough for Mrs. Jones, it's not good enough for me. But that sums up how human beings are. You know, like we really, really want something, but only when we think other people want it. If they don't want it, then suddenly it doesn't mean anything to us. Like, honestly, the amount of guys that I've met that like, I really, really want a hot girl. And when I ask them why, they're like, you know, I just want to have one. It's like, well, why? It's like, well, it comes down to it. They just want to show off to their friends. They don't actually want a hot girl. Most guys, what they really want in a girl is somebody who isn't crazy, doesn't drive them insane, likes having fun with them, enjoys lots of sex, and is good looking. They don't have to be really, really hot. That's actually one of like the worst qualities. Yes, you want them to be good looking, but they don't have to be ridiculously hot. You're going to do with all the other guys trying to hit on them all the time, all of the other problems that come with it. And they could be bitchy, and they might not enjoy the same hobbies as you. These are not important qualities. The important qualities are, are much different, and look looks is, is just one part of it. So the point is, with pre-selection, you have desire because the girl knows that other women want you. She doesn't get to say, oh, you're not attractive, because obviously you are attractive, because other women want you. So that doesn't even come into it. Yes, you're attractive, it's just a question of whether they like you. And because they're talking to you, you're building trust, and that's getting them to believe that you're attractive. Now finally, with pre-selection, we have value. And this is probably one of the most important parts of why pre-selection works. But before we get onto that, guessing, what do we have? What are we guessing? You're in the line. People are lining up, they pay nothing. Well, I think my least favorite answer is uh, walk past the line of girls and touch their hands lightly. Oh, okay. Walk past the line of girls and touch their hands lightly. It's interesting you say that. That's Brooke's least favorite, but it's very interesting you say that. We'll talk about that in a little bit later on, okay? Should we talk to the bouncer or the bartenders? Okay. Um, and then mostly people are really concerned that they don't have any female friends that would help them. People are concerned you don't have female That's why I want to teach this technique. Because you don't have female friends, that's fine. Because this technique is going to work anyway. Absolutely anyway. It's a very quick and easy way to get pre-selection. It doesn't have to cost you a thing. Uh, there's two ways of doing it, actually. I'm going to teach you one way where you... It doesn't cost you a thing, but it does involve spending money. Interesting, but it works. And the other way is it's completely zero. Um, and we'll talk about both. Um, the hand, the hand touching things, interesting. I wouldn't do it outside a bar, but there is a place where you could do it. And we're gonna talk about that at the end when we talk about stealth techniques. It sounds like somebody here is already well aware of self-attraction. Um, okay, cool. So. Kick face, I think. Kick face, all right, kick face. All right, value. Why does pre-selection build value? This is really simple. To do this, we have to delve into some basic understanding of stocks and commodities. So here's how it works. The more people want something, the more value it has. The more they can get it, the least value it has. So if you're trying to get laid, if you're running around trying to get laid, you're basically saying, hey, anyone can have me. I really want a hot girl. Any one of you can have me. And you're making yourself very available. And anything that's very available lowers in value. If it's easy to get, then it doesn't mean anything. No one cares. If it's hard to get and everybody wants it, its value goes up. I.e., if there's a whole bunch of girls trying to get you and you haven't picked anybody, then your value goes through the roof. And that's what drastically boosts your attraction level. So at this point, you should be able to see that pre-selection is very key because there are other women that want you and you're not really going after any of them. So your attraction level goes through the roof as everyone's like, wow, these girls are over this guy. And yet he's just chilling and being there with them. I remember one of the first times I went out to go and pick up girls, I was in a bar and this guy came in and he was like, you ever see guys, you just wanna punch them in the face the minute you see them. You know what I mean? Like those guys, I feel bad saying it, but they do exist. There's just a certain type of guy that he turns up and you see him and he's like 
a little bit short and he's a little bit pudgy. He's got this big grin on his face. He looks like the kind of guy that would buy like an AIDS medicine and then increase its price like hundreds and hundreds of dollars so people can't afford it. You know what I mean? And you're just like, man, I just want to punch this guy in the face. He walked in the bar and I remember just instantly not liking him. And he turned up with eight of the hottest girls I've ever seen and they were all dancing around him. And I was like, how did he do that? Now, years later, I've realized that that was just pre-selection and odds are he wasn't having sex with any of them. They were probably just friends of his and they just probably thought he was gay. But the point was, he walked in with all those girls and by the end of the night, every girl wanted to know who he was. Every girl was looking at him and he probably could have picked up someone else even if it wasn't one of the girls that he was with. So he was actually doing a really good thing. I'm kind of glad that I looked at him at that point because even though I didn't really like him then, I learned a lot from analyzing him. His value was absolutely through the roof. And it's something you can get just by meeting girls and hanging out with them. So what is better than the $1.29 ring um, where you don't have to bring girls to a bar? You don't bring them in with you, but you can pull off something just as easily. I told you I'm going to tell you two different ways of doing it. Final guess. Does anyone have it? Um, Let's find out. One, so, well, I've got two, but it just, you just erased it because you said don't bring someone. But someone said bring your grandma so she can say nice things about it. Bring your grandma. I, I don't think anyone's ever tested that. You should test it and let us know how it goes. I, I can um, see it would work. And <laughs> then the other I can say it wouldn't. involves spending money, so uh, order champagne or another fancy. Order champagne or another fancy drink, kind of, possibly, in the way that breaks even, yes. Um, so let's talk about this. Here's how it works. Um, and then after this, for those of you guys that are interested, we can talk about a bunch of self-attraction techniques. I'm going to tell you about the hand brushing technique, which one of the guys mentioned, but I wouldn't do it outside. I'm going to explain why I wouldn't do it outside. I'll explain where I would do it. And then if you guys like these self-attraction techniques, I'll tell you where you can get a whole bunch more. Actually, do you guys like this kind of stuff or is this like not? for you. You know what I mean? Like there are some people that like stealth attraction. They like the idea of being able to attract the girl, but she doesn't really know what's happening. And then she falls for him and then she's sucking his dick before she realizes it. And then there's other kind of guys that are like, no, I need to tell a girl exactly how I feel. And if she doesn't like me, that's fine. Um, they don't, they don't want to work through it. So I, I'm curious how many of you really want to learn stealth attraction techniques. If you want to learn more stealth attraction techniques, write it. Say, yes, I want to learn stealth attraction techniques. If you don't want to learn stealth attraction techniques, please write it and say, actually, I just, I don't care about stealth attraction. That'd be good to know. Cool. Um, so, how can we build it with zero? Well, it's all about, the, the trick was the line, right? The trick was just standing in a line at the bar. This is the thing. When I get into a line at a bar, I don't just jump in the line. I always sit and watch it first, and I wait for a group of girls to get into the line, and then I join the line right behind them. And now there are two ways that you can go about doing this, and it all depends on how good your game is. So I want you to assess your game right now on a scale of one to 10. If you think you're a one to five, i.e. not that good, in the lower half, then you're gonna use the technique that uses money, uh, but breaks even, doesn't cost you anything. I'll explain in a minute. And then if you are five to 10 or six to 10, um, then you might wanna tie the technique where you don't spend any money. So first of all, the first one, it's a very simple pre-selection technique. You go up behind the girls, you're a beginner, you're, you're not that great at gaming. She says to them, hey guys, I'm sorry to bug you. It's just, um, this club can be a little bit of a bitch letting people in if they don't have women with them. And I invited a couple of my girlfriends to come and it looks like they're not gonna get in till later but I don't want to stand outside in the hot and or in the cold. Um, would you do me a favor? Would you just pretend when we get up to the bouncer that we're all part of the same group and I'll totally buy like a round of drinks for you um, and then maybe you guys can buy me a round of drinks later on in the night. So what you're doing here is you're basically making a false trade. You're like, if you guys pretend you know me, then when we get in, I'll buy you guys a round of drinks and then if you want, you guys can buy me a round of drinks later on in the night. And what's beautiful with that is it breaks even. And the funny thing is they're doing a two for one, right? Because they're pretending to be your friend and then later on in the night, they're gonna buy you a drink to make up for the fact that you bought them a round of drinks, which kind of breaks even when you weigh everything up and there's a good chance you might even get into the club for free because you're going in with a big group of girls. However, this technique doing this does involve spending money and isn't 100% zero free, but if you're a beginner, it really can work and it won't necessarily cost you anything. But the cool thing is, once the girls have made a commitment to pretend you're in the same group, they'll get talking to you on the way up to the bouncer. So you've got a good five, 10 minutes as you get into the club where you're talking to girls, getting to know them, and then when you walk in, you're walking together, you'll go to the bar together, you'll talk to the bartender together, and everyone will see that pre-selection effect of you walking in. But you can do it without spending money. But it does involve a little bit of game. You can do exactly the same thing, except you approach the girls on the outside as you would if they were on the inside. You get talking to them, you make them laugh, you giggle, and then as you get to the front, say, hey guys, do me a favor. Um, this guy, this bouncer at the front can be a bit of a dick um, if he thinks you're not coming in with girls. I've got some friends that come in to join me later on that are girls. By the way, that's the pre-selection technique. I've got some friends coming to join me later on that were girls. And that's it. 
you've mentioned it so the girls now know you've got pre-selection and now you're getting actual visual pre-selection from those girls. This is the beauty of pre-selection. You can reference having it to a group of girls to get in and then everybody else will see you with a group of girls and now you've got real pre-selection. So you can scale it up by just casual phrases every so often. Just be like, yeah, I've got a couple of my girlfriends that are gonna come and join me later on. They flaked, who cares? No one knows, the point is you've already gained the pre-selection and you're in. Doing it that way, you'll be able to get in. It won't cost you any money. The girls will pretend to be there with you and then you can always just walk up to the bar with them, order yourself a drink, let them order a drink and boom, you've walked into the venue with a bunch of girls. Hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you guys see just how easily you can do that. You don't need to have a girl coming to the bar with you. You don't need to um, travel in there with a big entourage. You can just meet somebody in the line and walk in there with them. And that is a very quick and easy way to build it yourself fast, quick and easy. So, stealth attraction techniques. I would love to do a couple of things right now. I'd love to teach you that one stealth attraction technique. Um, and uh, before I do that though, I am gonna ask you guys for some questions. So if you guys have some questions, then I'm gonna go through them, I'm gonna answer some questions, then I'm gonna teach that stealth attraction technique. But before that, I wanna know, does anybody wanna learn this? Does anyone wanna learn stealth attraction techniques? Yeah, they really do. Is there a lot of people yes. saying it? Yes. Okay, good. all right, that's good. Is anyone like, no, I don't wanna learn stealth attraction techniques? Um, no, not no, really. no. Is anyone like, I don't really care about it? Some people are like, sure, and some people are like, I, I already have Richard's product, but yes, I'm interested in learning anyway, knowledge is great. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool, all right. So for those of you guys that already know about stealth attraction techniques, then the rest of this might be boring for you. The rest of this, I'm just gonna do a QA. and I'm gonna take through and I'm gonna teach some of the stealth attraction techniques that, um, that I know from Richard. Me and Richard, I don't know if you guys know this, but me and Richard Laruna, who created the concept of self attraction, we used to go out and wing together, we started working together, and I was the one that brought PUA training out to America to teach how to do it over here. So me and Richard are very good friends, I know the techniques incredibly well, and I'm gonna share um, one of them with you right now, and I'm gonna tell you where you guys can get a whole bunch more of them if you wanna go and watch a video and learn some more. Um, so for those of you guys that already know this, this, this is probably a good time to tune out and not watch it. But for those of you guys that really want to learn Stealth Attraction, for you guys that wrote Stealth Attraction, you're going to want to click on a link I'm going to give you which is going to let you watch a whole bunch more videos. But before that, let's do like uh, three or four questions. Sure, I've got a couple. Okay, um, cool. Can you make this work in places that aren't bars? Can you make this work in places that aren't bars? Yes, you can. And here's how. Really, all you're doing is finding an excuse to hang out with a group of girls. So one of the things that I like doing is just find a group of loud girls. It can be anywhere, right? It can be in a Starbucks coffee shop next to a college, or it can be in a, 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 a library. It can be anywhere. And all you're doing is finding an excuse to talk to one group of girls, and then you just hang out with that group of girls. Boom, you've got pre-selection. From there, you can meet other people, and you just got to reference the group. In the same way to the first group, you reference your friends that are going to come and meet you later who are girls. And the group that you're in, you're just, when you meet somebody else, you go, yeah, I'm just hanging out with my friends over there. As long as you're referencing the friends you're hanging out with and those friends are girls, you're good. Cool. Question two. Uh, next question. Uh, what if you have your guy friends with you if you're out with your boys? How what if you're out with your boys? So I, I'm going to be honest here. Going out with your boys is like the worst way to meet women. Going out with a group of guys literally is one of the worst things you can do to go and meet um, to go and meet people and generate attraction. It can be done, it's not impossible, but typically I like guys nights to be guys nights where you don't really worry about picking up chicks, and then when you wanna go and meet girls, be focused, take one wing who's a guy, max. Uh, if not, take a group of girls. It's the best way to do it and give you the best results. Cool, uh, two more questions. Sure, so uh, what, does this work on girls that you already know, or girls that put you in the friend zone? Does this work on girls you already know? It can work, but if you want to generate pre-selection with them, you have to not see them for a period of time. They need to like forget what you're like. So typically I strongly suggest people disappear for like six to eight weeks, go off, do something else, then come back, then make it happen. Final. Uh, one guy wants a summarized version of the PEN model. But okay, uh, yeah, so, so somebody's asking for a summarized version of one of our biggest things that we teach. Um, that we pre primarily only teach at the Interpersonal Attraction Institute, which is my own training institute for my closest VIP students. Uh, I know we've given you guys access to that in the past, so unfortunately, I can't take anybody else on today, um, and I can't break down the PEN model because we use that to help people work out exactly the kind of lifestyle they wanna have. All right, so stealth attraction. Let me teach you that stealth attraction technique that I was talking about. Now, this is something that came up with by Richard, and it's very clever. It doesn't really work outside a bar because everyone will notice what's going on, and it's also kind of strange for you to walk past and then turn around, because that doesn't typically happen. But in a bar, something you can do, especially if it's crowded, is you can walk through a crowd, and as you walk through the crowd, just very gently brush your hand against people as you walk by them. So it can be typically against their arm, or against their hand, or against the inside of their, or, sorry, the outside of their leg, or just on the, on the thigh. And as you walk past them, you're just gonna brush them. And what happens is you'll move through four, five, six groups
groups of people and then turn around. And as you turn around, you will see large groups of people turning to look straight at you. And as you do, you can now get a whole bunch of different eyes looking at you. You can look and you can lock eye contact and force an indicator of interest, uh, which is a forced IOI, which is another self-attraction technique where you lock eye contact and smile. And the girls that smile back at you, remember, they can't see each other because they're all looking at you. The girls that smile back at you are the ones you know are interested. And it doesn't matter if there's like six girls that aren't interested because you've probably got three or four that really are. And the hottest one of those, you can then go and approach straight away and you can just be like, hey, I love your smile. So it's a very powerful technique. It's very easy. I'll run through it again. You walk through the crowd, touching people as you go. They turn around to look at you. You turn around to look at them. Lock eye contact, big smile on your face, and approach the hottest girl. So these techniques, they're very detailed and very powerful. They're called stealth attraction techniques. And underneath this video, you guys should be able to see a link. Um, can I just get a confirmation? C guys, in the window, can you just type and make sure you can see the link? We've had some complications in the past with it. I think it was good last week, but I just want to make sure. And you're going to post the link in the chat. So, okay, Matt's going to post the link in the chat if you don't see it. Do yourself a favor. Click the link now and just store it up on another window because um, we're done with questions here anyway. So you can click that link, go watch it, and you're going to get a breakdown of a whole bunch of stealth attraction techniques that you can learn from Richard, my good buddy himself. And I guarantee you, if you don't click on that link, you're going to regret it because for the next week, you're going to be like, man, I really wish I knew like some technique to help me in this situation. And he basically breaks down a bunch of different situations and the correct stealth attraction technique to use where you don't have to worry about getting rejected. So it's very simple, very easy. Click on the link, do yourself a favor, um, and run that by. Cool. Um, yeah, go for it. How do you do that technique without being creepy? That is a great question, and that is why you're gonna to wanna to click on that link. Because the entire program is all about how to do techniques like that without coming across as creepy. So click on the link and let Richard explain it to you because that's what he does, and honestly, I don't like teaching other people's stuff. It's his thing, he created it, and, and it's a great program. It's an amazing seminar, and people really enjoy it. Um, the guys that have already seen it can probably tell you as well in the chat because you know they've gone through it and seen them as well. So I think the key with any of these programs is to go through it and look at the ones, and you basically pick and choose the techniques that you like. So like I love forced indicators of interest, I think that's great. There are other techniques that aren't necessarily my favorite, but that doesn't mean that they're not good, but there are other people that like them. I said favorite. Um, cool, uh, that's what my son says, he says favorite, there's like an R. Cool, any other questions before I bounce out? Yeah, yeah. go for it, let's do another one. Okay, uh, so how do my friends and I all get laid when we go out to the club when only one of us is the alpha male? How do my friends and I all get laid when we all go out to the club? So when only one, are you the alpha male? That's the question. If you're the alpha male, honestly, don't care. If you're the alpha male, try and help all of them get laid. And then once they're all talking to a girl, then you move off and get your girl. If you're not the alpha male, don't go out with that group. You'll always be competing with the alpha male. It's not worth it. Literally, I cannot, cannot stress this enough. When you want to go out and meet women, don't go out in a big group of guys. Go out with a group of girls or go out with one other guy. Go and meet girls. You will not pick up women as easily as possible unless you are out with girls. Going out with girls is easy, going out with guys is hard. Get that in your head, don't think, how can I make it easier if it's hard? It's hard, don't worry about it. Go out with guys and just have fun with guys and don't worry about picking up. And if you pick up, great, and just enjoy that. But when you go out with girls is when you're gonna have the result, or when you go out with one guy, meet girls in the line, in the bar, whatever, use that as pre-selection and then meet girls, everything will be easy. Don't make it difficult. One big issue guys make is they make it difficult. Don't make it if difficult. Make it easy, make it work. Cool, thank you ever so much guys, it was a pleasure. Thank you ever so much for helping out Brooke and Matt. It was awesome and I suspect I will see you next week. Actually, I know what we're teaching next week. Um, it's written on that board. Next week we are gonna be teaching, oh, how to attract a perfect 10. So if you're interested in attracting 10s and you wanna get the hottest girls you can possibly get, then you are gonna wanna make sure you don't miss out on the seminar next week. Awesome. Thank you guys. Pleasure and I'll see you later.